because we just use 4 millimeter collimeter. Collimeter is that through the holes from which actually the radiation comes and form a sphere of radiation at one typical point. So I think gamma knife, the, uh, many of them you might not have seen the, how the gamma knife functions. Gamma knife is basically as a multiple sources, 192 sources of perfection model which we are currently using. The previous model, model B and uh, model U used to have 201 sources. The current model has 192 cobalt 60 radioactive sources. They all are positioned in such a way that all 192 beams they focus at one single point. So other way of describing it that we have a paper and a convex lens and then we are trying to burn out the paper with the, in the presence of the sun. We just go and up and down we will burn the focus because we are focusing the sun's radiation into one point of the paper. I think everybody has done it. So it is the same function. Uh, gamma knife radio surgery is a treatment of choice of majority of the cavernous sinus lesions. So it is an established uh, entity in itself and the standard of care now for majority of the lesions. And uh, but for that we need to select uh, suitable patients. And it is non-invasive. It is outpatient procedure, and it is minimum morbidity. Patient is admitted in the morning, and by evening patient is discharged. And very excellent uh, follow-up uh, is there without any uh, morbidity in the long term. And uh, effective across the pathologies, be it uh, schwannoma, be it cavernous sinus hemangiomas, be it uh, uh, other pathologies like uh, meningiomas, even the uh, pituitary adenomas, they all respond to the various doses of uh, uh, gamma knife. So, uh, but the thing is that uh, we need to select them carefully that the, only the small to moderate sized tumors can be treated because uh, radio surgery has its limits for its volume. So the larger the volume, the, it may be effective but the side effects of the radiation to the adjacent neurovascular structure is high. So the, if we select a larger tumor, the dose will spread to the normal brain and can lead to the radiation toxicity and sometimes uh, necrosis of the normal brain also. So large tumors with the mass effects is uh, a problem because uh, gamma knife is going to take time. Uh, most of the time it takes around 6 months to around 2 to 3 years to have its full efficacy. So that tumors which are causing a mass effect, midline shift, herniations, they are not the suitable uh, pathologies to treat with gamma knife. And uh, we, another thing is that we need to differentiate uh, inflammatory pathologies uh, radiologically before we subject them for uh, gamma knife because that is not a, a treatable situation scenarios for uh, radiation but they require other medical therapies. Uh, this is a case of uh, cavernous sinus meningiomas. So given gamma knife and over a period of time you can say that it doesn't disappear but they shrink in size and stays there, it doesn't, they do not grow in size over a period of time. And uh, many times so cranial neuropathies usually they present with six palsies or rarely with maybe even the third palsies also. Many times these palsies reverse over a period of time and uh, because the mass effect is there, the stretch and uh, uh, compression on the nerve, it actually goes over a period of time and they act, these neuropathies many times they recover. So again a case and uh, you said that a significant reduction and this is likely to be followed up over a period of time and uh, these uh, tumors, the residual tumors, they are static in time over a period of time. So again a pituitary adenoma, you all know that this is a now a standard of care to give uh, adjuvant uh, stereotactic radio surgery to all residual tumors in the cella or into the cavernous sinus. So it is now a standard of care across the world now. So if there is a tumor residual, they are likely to grow over a period of time. So it is better to treat them upfront rather than to let them grow. So that once if they grow inside, some it, they may be touching the uh, optic pathways or the optic nerve chiasm. So that the radio surgery becomes difficult because it has the toxicity effects on the uh, visual pathways. So the tumor which is away from the visual pathways, small in size, they are the actual very good. Those patients are actually good candidates for radio surgery. Uh, this is the 6 nerve schwannoma, 5th nerve schwannoma given radio surgery, they practically, the 6 nerve schwannoma practically melted away and the 5th nerve schwannoma has significantly reduced in size and this residual size is likely to stay. So many times so these patients go to the people, those who are not conversant with the radio surgery, they feel that the tumor has not disappeared and probably may require a surgery or something like that. But actually these tumors, they shrink in size and they will stay forever. 
So they are unlikely to grow, but definitely they require a follow-up. Very few small percentage of patients may have a breakthrough and they can grow. That happens usually in case of meningioma, but not in cases of uh, schwannomas. But this is not uh, uh, gospel truth, but things can go wrong. So they require regular follow-up. Uh, this is the hemangioma. So hemangioma is one thing which a small, medium-sized hemangiomas so they are not a surgical candidates. Gamma knife or any other form of radio surgery, I would tell you that they are that is the standard of care. These hemangiomas, they practically melt away uh, with the radio surgery. And sometimes we are very difficult. So for example, a patient comes to you with the cavernous sinus lesion, we are thinking whether it is a meningioma or it is a schonoma or it is a, maybe a cavernous sinus hemangioma. If there is a diagnostic dilemma, so the treatment is more or less similar for all that because we are not going to operate them, we give subject them for radio surgery. So this lesion will melt away or significantly reduce in size within six months. So which is not going to be the case in meningiomas or in case of Shawnma. Then it becomes diagnostic that probably this is not there, probably this is a meningioma. So they practically significantly shrink in size in a short period of time and very good results. So, uh, I would say that uh, with this uh, uh, statement that small meningiomas, they are not a candidate for uh, surgery. They should always be subjected for uh, radio surgery. So again, a, a, a meningioma and uh, this is the post uh, radio surgery. So it has significantly reduced, practically disappeared on the right side and the patient has very good uh, uh, ocular movements in post treatment.